Okay, so this has been a long awaited explanation for some of you. For those of you who have, you know, watched me from the jump and have followed along with my hockey career and known me as a hockey uh, player. A lot of you DM me. I get a lot of DMs, a lot of comments still. You know, are you playing hockey? Are you playing hockey? Did you retire from hockey? And, you know, I put a video out recently kind of officially announcing that. I didn't, it was a quicker video. I didn't give a full explanation. Just kind of announced it more so and told you what I was doing for those who watched it. You know, I, I, I made a video, actually, I made a full podcast about this with Carter and there were some technical issues on his end of the video. And I was like, ah, I don't want to like half-ass this one. And ultimately I decided when I do this podcast and explanation, I would just do it by myself, me talking to the audience who has been here since the start. I, I didn't know if I really wanted to even do this because I don't really feel that it's everyone's business, but uh, I feel like I owe it to the people who have been loyal to me from the start. You know, there's people who made that transition from the hockey vlogs over to the comedy sketches with me and have just been super loyal followers of mine and a fan of mine or, you know, whatever you want to call it. And I feel like I owe you guys the explanation. That's why I'm doing this, you know, not for, not for any of the haters or whatever, but there are, <laughs> the other day, actually, it's funny. I, I came upon uh, the podcast I used to do with Trav for Oilers. <laughs> he actually touched upon our like separation of, you know, when I, left his podcast and and he went full-time whatever doing his thing there was a couple comments i saw people now making rumors of why i actually retired and i was like okay maybe for that reason too i should probably address it and you know make sure i tell my own story rather than people making shit up about me i mean they're going to do that regardless but at least the people who actually care can know like these comments i took a screenshot of him Pat Shea was getting called up to the AHL and he gave it away for YouTube. I heard he gave up on pro hockey due to medical reasons. He got a big concussion last spring. And then this guy on the res. Pat was cut during training camp. Like, no. See, these, th none of this is true. Yes, I was getting called up to the AHL and I, and, I, and I did retire for hockey. Not specifically for YouTube. I think that's a very old, outdated statement and career path. It's just social media like all the apps and acting in general it's not like it's not like you can just give it up giving it up for youtube in particular okay but anyways i see comments like this and i'm like these these idiots like so i'll tell my story and i do want to start with this listen i'm going to talk about my decision and throughout i want to make sure it's clear i do not hate hockey and i do not dislike hockey uh fatigued from it for sure that's a definite but i do not hate it I do not dislike it in any sense. I, I actually, I mean, I enjoy getting on the ice. I enjoy the art of hockey, like being out there and playing. I don't enjoy everything that comes with it, but I just want to make that clear as I go on into this video because I'm probably going to talk in a way. I don't want it to be misunderstood that I'm like hating on the sport. I do not hate the sport, okay? I still still like, you know, I like hockey. I'm, f I'm forever grateful for everything that it gave me and my time as a hockey player. Like, so I just want to make that clear before I go on. But, okay, yes, ultimately, I chose to stop playing hockey. And to address that this comment, I got a big concussion last spring. That's not why I stopped playing hockey. And I did not, like, okay, two things can be true. I did get a concussion at the end of the season last year. That has nothing to do with the fact of why I retired from hockey, okay? I've had plenty of injuries I lost a tooth, I, I split open my lip, I split open my chin, I sprained my ankle. Like I've been injured plenty of times, it's not why I stopped playing hockey, okay? That is not, I, I retired ho from hockey, I chose to do it before the year even started, honestly. If I wanted to prove it, I, had, I have proof of it and if I cared that much about these guys, I have, I have proof of me, you know, in writing, telling people that it was probably gonna be my last season going into the year and before my you know concussion or whatever that is just haters talking and i know that will happen people will make shit up and about why i stopped playing and that's okay i chose to stop playing to pursue my passion my, my next part of life it was that time for me to get a full explanation of this i'm gonna have to go back and kind of 
tell my whole storyline here of how that came about because it's confusing for a lot of people. I, I that like why Pat was had his best year yet. He was getting called up to the AHL and he just retired from hockey. What the fuck, you know? Like you guys, I, there's a confusion there, you know. This this I I don't expect you guys to understand necessarily. I, I, like ninety percent of you probably won't understand and can't can't relate to me. But there is going to be people who do. I just hope that you can understand my point of view. I don't expect you to be able to like understand why I did it, you know, like, but here, here I'll give it a try, you know? Um, essentially, in short, my dream is not to make the NHL or it's not anymore. It's no longer to make the NHL. It wasn't, it hasn't been for, for a bit. Um, when I was a kid, I definitely, definitely went through a huge phase where I loved hockey a lot. Like, I don't want to make that seem like I never loved it but i was i was definitely born into hockey you know i played hockey from i started i was got on skates i was three years old my dad played hockey he he went to bc he is an nhl scout my brothers play hockey and i was born into it and i was good at it i wasn't always the best but i i, I was i was good at it and i i loved it i had a passion for it especially growing up i mean i remember Marking the date on the calendar, going to my, you know, when the the next tournament was going to be in Canada or whatever, and I was it was like Christmas morning. Like I was genuinely, I loved it. I mean, I, like I don't want anyone to think that I didn't like that. That would be a lie if I told you I never loved hockey and it wasn't my dream at one point, you know, to make the NHL. But or but I also you know I maybe it was just told what my dream was. You know, it was always oh you're you were playing hockey. Your dream is to make the NHL. You know, I don't know. That's where I get a little, maybe, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I do know though, for a fact, I loved hockey as a kid. That is a fact. Whether or not it was always my dream to pursue it. But anyways, as time goes on, high school comes and you know, I still had that drive. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to go D1. And, but during that time and growing up, I, I always had this passion for making videos. And it was always acting. It was always acting. I would watch movies and I wanted to be them on the TV. Pretend in my room that I was acting and in those movies and in those TV shows. That's a fact. And I would make these videos, little skits with my siblings, like, you know, terrible. But like I was acting because I wanted to be that too. And I, I always wanted that. I always loved that. I never, never knew what to do with that, you know, because I was a hockey player. That was my, that was my job. That was who I was. It was my identity. That's all I knew. I, I, I got to high school. I remember applying to prep schools and kind of entertaining my parents to be like, why don't you take uh, video classes or uh, why don't you do theater, Pat? You know, like, you, you know, you'd be good at theater. You, I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a hockey player. You know, I don't, I can't do theater. You know, what is, you know, there's that stigma there. Like, I'm, I, I can't do both. If I'm, I'm a successful hockey, I'm good at hockey. I was, I was, you know, I was, I was the best on my team or whatever. And I can't just go do theater. I could, but I'd get made fun of, I'd be that guy. You know what I mean? It's a tough thing when you're a kid in high school to do that, to make that jump and whatever. So I never really did anything about it, but especially in high school, I remember really, really like loving the fact and I would dream of it. I would daydream of being in movies and acting. Like I literally, I mean like daydream. And I, I cannot remember a time that I ever like really daydreamt or dreamt about being in the NHL, to be honest with you. Like that's that, like, uh, but I, when I was in high school, I would, I mean, like I would picture myself as these guys. Like I watched movies like Ted and I always loved comedy movies more than anything. Obviously that's why I kind of went to the comedy sketch direction and comedy movie direction there with, on my own. But that, that aside, like I remember watching Mark Wahlberg comedy movies when he started getting into comedy, like the other guys, Ted. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I wanted to be like Mark Wahlberg. He was such, he like in particular was such a big like inspiration for me, still is like Boston guy doing it, like doing this dream that life that I wanted, you know? Like, so I always th thought of him as like someone I looked up to. It was an inspiration for me, like The Rock. I went through a huge phase where I loved The Rock. Channing Tatum was popping in 21 Jump Street, 22 Jump Street. I was trying to be him. I would do the scenes. I would rehearse the scenes. I wanted to be that. When I remember like even filling out like questionnaires and shit like randomly for like drafts and shit and like 
they asked like who my like idols are i would write like the fucking rock and like i would play it off like i was joking like oh mark Wahlberg, you know the rock and i'd play it off like i was joking to the other hockey guys because they're all writing like fucking Sidney crosby like you know the shit i'm 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 like ah yeah, the rock i'm like no but i'm fucking serious you know at the end of the day i was being serious those are the those are the guys like i'm not saying i don't know them as people but they're, the way that they live ryan reynolds and stuff like their jobs their the way you know the, their lifestyle their career path that's that's the shit i wanted to do and i knew that in high school i was daydreaming about it now i was also really good at hockey and i was kind of like told this is my path this is what i'm doing so in my head it was always okay one day i'm gonna you know one day i'm gonna do acting when i'm done with hockey i'll do acting and i'll pursue that and i'll be that you know that was always it was like a, oh, after I'm done with hockey, I'll do that because I can't do that. I can't do both. And I was always kind of told like, this is what you're doing. You're a hockey player. Yeah, I was every hockey coach telling me how to live my life. Every, every scout, you know what I mean? Like all these things, like it was just shaped me of who I am. It was, it was the path and I'm not, and I don't wish it happened a different way necessarily. Like everything, I believe everything happens for a reason and everyone has their own path. I was meant to have that path. I believe that I'm not regretting my days as hockey, but. This is the situation I was in. And I didn't quite even know. At this point in my life, it was just, yeah, well, after I'm done with hockey, I'm gonna pursue acting, for sure. Whatever time goes on, I get drafted. All of a sudden, being drafted, that's a whole other thing. All of a sudden, all these people start talking to you and think you're, thinking you're cool, all this fake love around, around the town and whatever. So now I'm, now I'm even more cemented myself as the hockey guy. I was com I committed, to me, uh, committed to Maine, D1, the hockey guy there, public school, get drafted the next year. I'm very cemented myself in my town, my peers, everyone that's, I'm, I'm the hockey guy, you know, for sure. And that's fine, you know, I, at the time, I, you know, I thought I still wanted that. I wanted to make the NHL, I thought, I didn't know. So then I, whatever, I start going to development camps and I go to UMaine freshman year. Uh, UMaine as a whole, I didn't get the playing time that I felt I deserved, and I actually think that I proved I deserved in, in my pro hockey era what I could have done if I was played, but that's aside the point. I'm not holding a grudge. That's just part of the story. So I didn't, I didn't feel that I was, you know, giving the love that I deserved there. So whatever. So that's one part of it, which is never fun as a hockey player. And then two, I remember even for like freshman year, I, I remember like really dreading going to the rink. Like, oh, fuck, I'm gonna go to the rink again. You know, and I, I thought, oh, like, it's it's because I'm a freshman and, you know, I don't have really control. Like, everyone's older and you're kind of like the bitches of the team still. And, oh, you know, it's probably that. Like, that's probably why I'm not loving it. Going to the rink every day and coach being, everything being so serious. And this was the same thing when I went to development camps. I would dread going to NHL development camp. See, this is, a, this is where it gets confusing for a lot of, people watching because you're not gonna understand that. You have no experience. You always had this, like I know a lot of people watching either grew up wanting to make the NHL and be D1 and you didn't make it. And you're watching this from a perspective of, oh, why is he stopping? I wish I could have lived that life. Or you're someone in high school and you're wanting to live the life of a college hockey player, a pro hockey player. And I, I think you still should, by the way, if that's your dream, do it. I'm not saying not to, don't let me persuade you in any way, but this, so, but for a lot of you, most of you, 99% of you, you're not gonna understand this part of it where like I say, I went to an NHL development camp and I hated it. I didn't, I didn't look forward to it. It was the, it was the, it was the middle of summer and I, it was the week of the year that I dreaded the most. And I went to six of them and I fucking, dreaded that week more than anything. When I was there, I waited, I was scratching and itching for it to be over so I could go home. That is the truth. Be, take that as you will, I don't know, whatever. It was not fun. <laughs> I'm not, again, I'm not shitting on hockey. I, they, this is, I believe people taking the fun out of hockey for me is what it was. It be definitely becomes a business. Yeah, especially like these development camps, these scouts and shit, they try to intimidate you. They try to have this power trip over you. They, there's this weird, you know, I don't know. I, it's just, that's what it is. And I didn't care for it. I didn't have fun there. You're not skating. Like I always just, oh, you're, you didn't skate hard enough on this four check and you're getting yelled at. Like 
this whole hockey thing, you know, it's like, I just felt it so weird. And so that, so there's this for sure. I'm realizing this in college. This is something I'm realizing and processing. I remember having conversations sophomore year. I started getting more into creativity shit as I was getting into this age too. I had a brief stint where I was into rapping for whatever reason, which you can laugh about if you want. I mean, it was just a creative thing. And I found myself like thriving in this thing that was creative. And I was like, oh, this is fun. This is something different. This is new. And whatever, I went through a phase where I was enjoying writing like lyrics and stuff. And because it was a creative thing that came to you. Like the other creative people can understand that. Like there's this creative flow that you can't really explain. It just comes to you. And music is one of those things that's, that really expresses creativity like that. Writing comedy is too. And I don't know, that's why I thrive to that, I think. Cause it just was this creative thing that I was expressing and I was never able to before. So I, I actually remember having these conversations and one in particular with two teammates in the car before a night out, we were all just hanging and talking deep conversation. And I remember verbalizing being like, yeah, I don't really have that fire, the same fire as I did as a kid of like wanting to play hockey and wanting to make the NHL. It's not that exciting to me anymore, you know? And they agreed and these guys aren't creative. They weren't creative people. They weren't like me who, you know, had this whole other <clears throat> dream of after hockey. But this is just us realizing, yeah, it's not always what it's thought up to be, you know? You have this vision of it and then people, it becomes a business and people start taking the fun out of it for you. That definitely started happening. At the same time, I had to change my mindset there and say, okay, fuck, anything I can't control, fuck the coaches, fuck, fuck the scouts, the GMs, all these things. And just like, go have fun, you know, go have fun and play hockey. Forget all of them. That I didn't realize until senior year, which I'll get to, I guess. I think it was freshman year I was in college. So this is the creative side of things. Freshman year in college, I found Jimmy Tatro online. For those who don't know, he's a comedy sketch guy turned comedy actor. Now he became famous on YouTube or super popular on YouTube doing comedy sketches. Whatever, I became a huge fan of his videos. I was binge watching them in my dorm room freshman year. I remember just getting pumped like, oh, this is sick. And I made, I made a video in, when I was in prep school, senior year, that was a comedy video. I, 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 like, because I, like I said, we were getting into rapping, so I figured I'd make a parody of that. And I did this whole like parody, the life of a rapper in the dorm rooms of my friends. I got into this character and I played this comedic character when I was pretending to be a rapper and I had everyone laughing. You know, everyone that watched the video laughed, everyone that watched me in the character was laughing and I was like, oh, this is really fun. I'm like expressing myself in this way that it's not me. I get to just like do this because everyone knows it's a joke and you know what I mean? So I had that moment, my senior year of prep school. Oh, I, I also forgot the biggest, one of the bigger parts too of during high school, I took this class called uh, Marshfield Student Broadcasting this was in my public school. So I, I was familiar with making comedy skits besides this one in prep school where I, I expressed my creativity a lot. I was in high school making these comedy sketches every day for this class, this teacher, like encouraged you to be creative. And I remember feeling at home in that class, feeling like I could be myself. Um, I remember trying and learning how to act in that class because I was like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, how hard could this be? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna train, learn to act. And, Whatever, I remember doing the skits and feeling like, oh, this is like, this is sick. You know, whatever. I left the school for hockey and I didn't even do the senior year of that class. I did one year of that class. Went to prep school. Here we are, freshman year again, back to the Jimmy Tatro. And I found him and I was like, oh, this is sick. I could do this. And I remember telling my roommate, I could do this. I told my roommate, like, I could do this, dude. I'm gonna do this this summer. I feel like I could do this with my brothers. I go home and we like, we can make some comedy skits. And so I went home that summer and I forced my siblings into doing a comedy sketch about me and my brother, Neil. So I was committed to Maine. i sorry, I was at UMaine and my brother was committed there. And Neil, my younger brother committed to Maine, but then decommitted while I was there freshman year, which was very fun for me, if you can imagine how awkward that would have been. <laughs> so, I made a, some of the idea was that in the summertime, we would make a whole like, that my older brother would play the therapist and it would be me and my younger brother, Neil, discussing the beef around the house because he decommitted from Maine and there was this like fake, you know, comedic beef. I went home that summer, I forced him into doing it. It was funny, obviously it was my first, it was, you know, I was still learning back then, but it was funny, I had it, but I just never posted it. I never ended up posting it. 
I sent it to a few people. They thought it was funny, and that was about that was about it. I, I just never posted it, I, and I let another year go by. And then before junior year, I turned 21 that year, earlier in the year, and I'm in the summer before junior year, and I was driving to Foxborough from Marshfield, which is about a 40-minute drive, no traffic. So on the way home, there's a lot of traffic. So I would go there to work out in the summer times. I had a lot of time to think on those car rides just by myself, going to work out, coming home, a lot, of, a lot of thinking, a lot of alone time. I remember having this realization, like, damn, I'm 21, you know? When I was, you know, whatever, five, six years ago, seven years ago, I always had this, you know, when I'm older, like after hockey or when I'm older, I'm gonna become an actor. And I had this realization, like, damn, I'm fucking, I'm 21. Like, when am I gonna do all those things in my head that I said I was gonna do. Like, what, what am I waiting for? Like, how, when? So I had this realization, like, I need, to, I need to take action in some sense, you know, in some way, shape, or form, I have to take action and start making this vision in my head a reality. And I didn't, I don't know what, I didn't know what it was or how, I just had this realization, I'm like, fuck, like, I'm, what am I waiting for? When am I gonna do all the things I said, like, in my head? And I never said this to anyone. It was just all internal, which is kind of crazy. But anywho, time goes on. And then I start finding all these other YouTubers, you know, besides Jimmy Tatro and other guys, whatever. I found other comedy guys, but I found these vloggers that were in particular sports vloggers, like destroying college football player got this following from vlogging about his career and his, his life as a, as a D1 athlete. So then I was like, oh damn, I could, I could do that. That's that's something. So I, I start looking around. I'm like, oh, there's no hockey one. There's no college hockey player vlogging. So in my head, it was like, oh, this is an untapped market. Here's a way in for me to being like a, a creator, or like a step towards my acting career and essentially what it was in my head. I go to school junior year and my first mission was, hey, I'm going to make a vlog. I'm going to take action. I'm going to make a fucking day in the life of a college hockey player vlog because no one has done it before. So I got to campus, first few, couple weeks of school, I take out my iPhone 7, I start vlogging, hey, what's up, hey, what's up, hey, what's up guys, it's Pat, hey, what's up? I eventually, I figure it out a little bit, I make this vlog and naturally, I had this sarcastic tone the whole time and it just came out like half comedic and half like here, here's my life, whatever. So I posted it eventually and that month and I had people liking it or they thought it was funny and they thought it was cool or whatever. And then like a month goes by and it like does well, it gets like 200,000 views and all of a sudden I have, I'm, all of a sudden I'm a vlogger, almost all of a sudden I'm a college hockey vlogger. I actually remember a moment, I knew that it would work because of the untapped market. I remember a moment of being like, am I ready to like start this journey of like welcoming people into my life letting people know who I am. I'm uh, risking things too. I'm risking the fact that I'm a NHL draft pick and they're gonna now see me releasing a vlog and I'm not doing your stereotypical hockey bullshit. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm ready. I'm, I'm good with it. Whatever, I would rather be me than pretend to be someone else to try to impress some fucking old head hockey fucking idiots. So that was essentially what I went forward with. and. I, so I post that, I start doing these vlogs and I start getting a little more creative with them. I start adding a little more personality, get my energy, I'm learning how to put energy into my voice, slowly getting better. And then all of a sudden I start adding a little comedy skits into them a bit. And uh, at the time I didn't realize I was pushing myself so far in, a, in the wrong direction, but cause I became this people, I, I built an audience of people who cared one about one thing and one thing only my hockey career. and then realizing there's no longevity in that and that's not what I wanted to be known for. I, like I said, I wanted a way in because I wanted to do the comedy sketches. I wanted to be an actor and all of a sudden I'm um, the, the people there for my hockey career and that became an issue when college was over. So college then ends and my senior year was a little fucking pain in the ass because I got injured. I wasn't getting minutes and I was, you know, a draft pick and it was, oh fuck, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do with my life? If I'm not playing, I'm not gonna be in the NHL. If like, they're not gonna sign me, if I'm not playing, I'm injured because my coaches aren't fucking playing me. You know, I was pissed, you know, like, so that was happening while I was doing these vlogs and I had a 
you know, a pretty tough moment there where I was like, you know, hockey might not pan out. Like, what am I without hockey? And then I realized that like I had, I changed my whole mindset. I realized like, you know, I'm good. Like I'm just going to have fun playing hockey and whatever happens, happens. And I love this other thing too. Didn't quite know what I was doing with it yet, but I was still supposed to play hockey at this time. So it was, you know, I'm going to try to sign and then COVID hits, my season ends. Instead of getting a, a AHL tryout with Florida, COVID hits and nothing happens. So then I'm on this weird little break and okay, normally I could have went and shown that I could play in the AHL and I might've probably signed an A deal. Like, I don't know. COVID hits, nothing happens. No seasons get, every season gets canceled. No hockey's happening, no tryout. Uh, so I had this weird like summer where I was just skating, staying in hockey shape because I was going to play pro. And because of course, what else would I do? You know, genuinely, what else would I do if I'm not playing hockey? Like I'm of course, like, you know, I'm not going to go fucking get a desk job. Like I'm going to go play pro. So I was skating, waiting and waiting to hear from Florida, waiting to see what's going on there. And later in the summer, about August, also I find out, I think I found out in the meantime that Florida's like AHL season wasn't even going to happen, but there was still pro hockey that year. There was the coast and randomly in August, this I haven't actually told this story publicly. So August, 2020, this random follower of mine sends a DM. He's like, hey, I saw one of your videos. You said you wanted to get into acting. You should audition for this uh, hockey movie in Minnesota. And I was literally just like sitting there. And I remember seeing the date of like, you know, it's send in one by August 15th or whatever. And I remember I was like, oh fuck, it's August 15th. I should send in like a little thing. Hey, my name's Pat. This is my hockey background. and. Uh, this is my acting experience. Um, it was, it was, I had started doing comedy skits online. So I forgot to mention that. So 2020 summer, because I was just waiting and skating and not knowing when hockey was next, I was, I was like, yeah, I might as well start doing my comedy skits a little. So I had done a few hockey related comedy skits on my main YouTube channel, as well as vlogging my, you know, road to pro. I had one like the different types of hockey players and, you know, some minor stuff. I was just getting started. Uh, I did a little parody. I actually ended up doing that parody of my family with me and Neil and whatnot, a version of it. So that was my only acting experience at the time. So I put that in. This is my, here's a few of my videos. Then I got a call back from this and essentially long story short, I got a role in this movie, I get the offer. He's like, if you want the role, it's yours. It was like comedic relief. And this is, he thought my videos were funny on YouTube. And it was like, in comparison to what I have now, it was, they were, they were not good, but he saw something in it. These people who were casting saw something in it. And that gave me a boost of confidence for sure. And I, I was slowly becoming more like, I want to start doing acting so I can pursue this. And I didn't even know like what exactly the plan was and what was the, the path. I was just manifesting the fact that it was going to happen. I didn't, I don't even, you know what I mean? There's no, I didn't know exactly how or what. I was just going to start and see what happened and kind of and go with the flow. So I got this, this role and I had to sit there because it was filming in November through December. My first year of pro, I was going to sign in the ECHL. It was going to happen then. So I had this, I came to this decision. And this is a story I've never told publicly. So I had, I had to sit there with the fact of, do I do this movie for a month? Or do I sign pro and start playing professional hockey? So I had this long conversation with my dad. I was pretty much like, am I going to take my first year off of pro for a month long movie? Where I'm a supporting character, you know, I'm not even the lead. So this is how I looked at it. If I was presented two lives in front of me. I could either be a mega successful NHL player, even Connor McDavid level NHL player success, or I could be a successful actor, mega successful actor, live that dream and be an actor, do that for a living full time. Which one would I choose? And it was actor. It was be an actor all day, every day. I actually didn't even, when I put it like that, it was, oh yeah, I'd choose that any day of the week. You know, and I actually chose to do this movie instead of playing pro hockey my first year. Did not publicly say that. Really couldn't because of my little YouTube audience I had at the time, which what I thought was loyal, but only some of you were. Um, so I didn't tell that. And when I say it's like hard for you, 90% of you to understand is that it's like, 
you, I get DMs and it's like, oh, you're, why would you retire? You're living my dream or you're living the dream, like blah, blah, blah. It's not the dream. It's not the dream. It's your dream. It's not my dream, okay? Because I looked at it. I knew what my dream was at this point. And it was no longer to make the NHL if it, if it ever was. It was not. So I had this realization, okay, maybe, maybe I should start looking to get out of hockey and really pursue what I was meant to do. But anyways, this movie ends up getting canceled halfway through because of COVID and all this bullshit. Nothing ever happens perfect. So then I'm just sitting there and then the ECHL year gets canceled, whatever. And I'm sitting there with all this time. Fuck, I have time. Might as well finally start doing these comedy sketches full torque as, as, as much as I can with as, you know, there's not that many creative people around in, in this area. So I've met a few people on set, started flying out, doing sketches and whatnot, and just training and really is what it was. I was learning how to do it, learning how to act and just started. So that like January through when the next pro season started in like October, I was just learning how to act and do comedy sketches, trial and error, trial and error, doing it. I was like, finally I had all this time to do it. So I did it. And I remember what really boosted my confidence was the fact that this, these people who were casting for this movie saw something in me enough to cast me in that and believed in me enough to cast me in this as this comedic relief role as an actor in a real fucking movie. And I was like, damn, if they see that, then there's, some, there's something there. It gave me this boost of confidence and I went fucking, I just went for it and I started doing it and I tried. Now, at the same time, my YouTube audience did not care for sketch comedy, which was a real annoyance. That was frustrating because it's there there for my hockey career. I'm kind of like, fuck, well, I don't really, really want to play hockey anymore. Kind of like, kind of like done. I kind of played my hockey, you know? I, I, like, I, re I had this realization, like, I kind of played my hockey. I don't really, I don't want to make the NHL. And that kind of sucks. It's annoying as I'm like trying to do this thing that I always wanted to do and this audience is kind of burying it and not letting it grow and not letting it be because like they were there for my hockey career and that's when I realized like there's no longevity in building an audience surrounding your hockey career or sporting career because when they're only there for that you said can you retire or do something else they're, they're gone that was a realization I had but ultimately okay I gotta play pro hockey because I'm not gonna go do a desk job in the meantime I can't like financially afford to go full-time with social media so I'm gonna play hockey and I did I played pro for two years it was before the second year the summer before the second year I filmed a lot of shit and I started popping and working on Instagram this was summer 2022 and I was like damn yeah this is this is really fun I, I flew a couple of my friends in or they flew in and we filmed some shit and whatever I flew out to Minnesota again we we had some fun and we we film stuff and I see it start working. And I remember just being upset that I had to go play hockey. I was like, damn, my, my social media is starting to work. Now I have to go play hockey and I wish I could just keep filming. I, I love filming, I love acting, I love doing these comedies. And when I am playing these characters, it's like, I, 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 there's nothing I enjoy more, to be honest with you. There's nothing I enjoy more than when I get to act and do these characters comedically and express myself in a way that's like, it's not, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, it's not me, but I feel more like me than ever. And when I also had the realization, when I was on that movie set, I felt at home. Like I felt so comfortable. I felt I was surrounded by other creative people who understood me. And like, I just felt I was at home for the first time. Like not the case in a hockey locker room. There's not creative people in a hockey locker room. There's a few here and there. So that was the thing too. I was like, damn, these are my people, like the creative minds. I vibe with these people, in particular hockey people who are creative. Creative people who come from a hockey background is who I vibe with the most because we see life the same way. But anyways, yeah. So I, I remember going into the f second year of pro and I was like, damn, like, I don't want to, I don't really want to go play. I don't want to, you know, I, I want to keep filming, but I can't, I can't financially afford to not play this year. So I, I did it. And I also went into that year, I actually have DMs with this kid where I was like, kind of, he, I was like, you doing this full time now? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, damn, I kind of have been really thinking about going full time with it. I just don't know if I can yet. And because of financially, and he's like, he's like, dude, yeah, like once I took the leap, like I just knew I was in it and I just went for it. And you, you, you dial in that much more because you know it's like this or nothing. And whatever this season goes on, 
and my shit's growing more and more. I felt like I got really good at it. I felt like I hit my groove. Like I, I just got, I trained and I got better and I got good at it. And it, it's funny too, cause yes. Okay. So in this meantime, I had my best year statistically. I, I, I was almost a point per game in pro. I got called up to the AHL. I did got points in the AHL. Real, that was the tough part too. It's like, okay, I'm, but I'm also really good at hockey. You know, I know what I'm fired up about every morning, what I wake up and think about. It's acting and making comedy videos and my next project and this and that. But it's like, yeah, fucking at the same time, I'm really good at hockey. Damn. Am I stupid to not pursue hockey? Like, this is the thoughts I'm having in my head. I make the AHL and, I'm, and I do good there. And I realize, oh, I could easily, not easily, but like I could, I could play here, no problem. So I had this thing. I was like, oh, I could probably get an AHL deal if I push for one too, because I had this good year and whatnot. And I had these thoughts going on in my head throughout this, this season now, even though before the season, I was kind of like set on this is my last year. And I think part of why I did so good is because I didn't give a fuck. I was like, I'm just going to go play and, and show that I have skill and whatnot and just not give a fuck if the coach cares or not. And it worked. You know, I started scoring a lot and whatever, but it's a whole other thing. And I was still treated like a grinder even though I was scored 25 goals. So that's something that's tough too. That was a part of me. I was like, I'm tired of having a coach control if you can play the game or not. So I'll, I'll explain what this means. One thing that I realized about social media when I'm in charge, I can always play the game. So when you're in hockey and your coach decides you're not playing good that game, he sits you that game, he skips a shift. You're not getting power play that game. You're in the fourth line, can't play the game. You're not getting an even chance. Now <clears throat> on social media, if I have a bad video or I have a video that doesn't do well or it might not be as funny, ah, fuck, who cares? I'm still gonna go post another one the next day. Still get to play the game. That's what I meant by that. So that was this really annoying thing that I, I was pretty tired of in hockey is just like having other people control if I can play the game or not or how much I can play the game. If I'm gonna be this on the power play or if I'm just going to be in the bumper spot or if you know what I mean? So like that part was really annoying. I was pretty fed up with it, but hockey. And then we went on this trip down South Florida and in Atlanta and uh, it was like March in South Carolina. It was March, my second year here. So March, 2023. So first of all, I'm like in the sun and there's nothing that gets your creative juices fucking buzzing like a nice day the sun i remember sitting there like outside in the sun being like damn i want to be like creating shit right now i just have like spark to go create and make videos right now and like i'm in the sun i'm like this i don't want to be playing hockey right now i want to go be make videos ironically this week the next day i turned 26 and then i had this second realization i had one at 21 i had one at 26 and it was this realization in my head, like fucking damn, I'm 26. If I play another year of hockey because I think I'm supposed to, or I'm afraid to go full time with this because financially or whatever, and I will waste another year of my life. And if I continue to play hockey another year, I'll waste another year of my life and I'll be back in the same position next year wishing that I retired and went full time doing videos. So I was like, I'm done wasting years of my life is how I viewed it. I am done wasting years of my life, not pursuing what I want to. I, I texted my, my girlfriend about it. I was like, listen, this is, I think I'm done. I think like I had this, I think I, I'm, I think I'm good with it. Like I played my hockey. I played my hockey. I, I just, I don't want to be doing this. I, I wish that I was waking up making videos. I wish that I was not going to the rink. I'm, I personally feel like I'm wasting years of my life. Now I get the comment a lot like, dude, what are you doing? Retiring? You're, you're only young once, dude. You're going to look back and regret it. I am only young once. Exactly why I retired. I am only young once. I am in my prime creatively, et cetera, what I want to be doing. I am only young once. I have to stop wasting years of my life playing hockey. When I played my hockey, I'm good with it, you know? It's time. I did it, I'm good, I played enough. You know, like, I don't wanna make the NHL. If I played in the ECHL and the NHL, there'd be no difference to me mentally. The only difference would be the paycheck. And 
honestly playing the NHL, a lot less fun than the ECHL because of how serious it is. I played in the A, I didn't fucking like it. I was in the AHL, I was fucking miserable because it was not fun. These coaches, everything, it's way more serious in the coast. So these guys are fucking all trying to intimidate you all the fucking time. And it's like, this is stupid. This is stupid. I'm a grown ass man. And you're trying to like yell at me right now? Like, what the fuck are you talking? It was stupid. I didn't like it. It was dumb. So when I say, I don't care if I make the NHL, I didn't genuinely did not give a fuck. Still don't. I just stopped caring about it. I wanted to pursue what I loved and that was creating, it was acting, it was doing comedy sketches, etc. name it. And it was time for me to move on. I had that realization for sure. I was, it was like official in my head. And then the next game, I got smacked across the face with a hockey stick and lost a tooth. Funny how the world works, isn't it? Yeah, and then I definitely knew. If I didn't know before, I knew then. I was like, well, this is the universe telling me, stop playing hockey, you fucking idiot. You're wasting years of your life and you're risking your health for no fucking reason. Stop playing hockey. If that wasn't a telltale enough, the next game I went back, I got hit in the head and got a concussion. That wasn't the universe telling me even more, stop playing hockey, you stupid fuck. Do what you're supposed to be doing. That was how I viewed that. So it cemented it even more of a decision I already knew was like, this is the universe screaming at me to do that. And listen, again, I do not hate hockey. I do not, but I played my hockey. I played it. It's just not my dream to make the NHL anymore. It's not. I, I still can enjoy hockey if I want to. I can go down the rink and play. I can play in a men's league. It's, I can. And it's, but this, this is the point of being, it's like, I don't hate it, but I played it. I had enough. It was not what I wanted to do for a living. It was time for me to move on. It was scary though, because it's time. The season's over and I'm pretty like concrete now. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm calling it. I know what I need to do. I know what I'm supposed to do. I know what I'm meant to do. But at the same time, it's scary because I'm not for sure set up financially. I have money saved up, luckily. Like at this time I had money saved up um, from playing hockey mixed with making some from social media. Did I make enough from social media at this time to go full time with it? No, I did not. I had zero sponsorships at the time happening in that moment. I had money saved up and then I have a vision and a goal and a dream. And I, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to fucking go for it. I don't care. I'll figure it out if I spend all my money and I'm, and I'm nowhere, you know, at least I'm trying to do what I love. So I pretty much was like, I'm going to do this and I'm not going to have a backup plan. I'm not going to have a safe little, oh, I'll play hockey, you know, up until I can seamlessly go over. No, you know, no, fuck that. I'm not going to get where I need to be until I go full time in, until I take the leap and do it. So I took the leap. I took the leap and... I've been doing that for the last year. Now the concussion part, because people like to say that's why, there are a couple of people are trying to say that that's why. No, it's not why. It, what it did was fucking delay my start because the season ended and I had a fucking, I was dealing with concussion bullshit. So it delayed me from jump starting and going full speed into this creative world because I couldn't do what I was trying to do because I was having these fucking issues, whatever. So that, that's the only thing the concussion did. Now, if I wanted to play hockey this year, I could still go play hockey right fucking now. And I'm genu I'm being dead ass serious. I could right this second, go play hockey if I wanted to. Like I could sign still in the coast today, having not played all season and go play hockey. I swear to God, I could do that. And I'm not going to because I don't want to, okay? So when I say I chose to stop playing, I did. I could have made solid money in Europe. I had great offers. I probably could have gotten a deal. I just didn't care. I didn't care. I just wasn't what I wanted to do. So I, yes, I took the leap, started going. And it has been almost a year since I made that call. I could not be happier, to be honest. I don't regret my decision. I don't miss playing. You know, like everyone can miss a part of their life, like college. Like college was a really fun time in my life. Like sometimes I miss college and like the fun, but like 
I don't regret my decision at all, meaning like I don't miss playing hockey. I don't wish I was going to the rink every day at all. I am loving what I'm doing. The fact that I get to wake up, go edit videos or go write a video, go film a video creatively. And I, over the summer, I filmed three projects. I brought my friends in. We filmed these like, you know, short films and I was having the time of my life. I couldn't have been happier with it. I didn't know if it's gonna pan out. I didn't know if it was gonna make money. It's still in this progress. Like I, I'm luckily I got, a, I've gotten a few solid deals and I've been able to, you know, get by on this. Yeah, and I plan to just keep making more and keep climbing higher and just keep making every project bigger and keep it growing until, until it goes to the moon and that's what it will do. I have had a delayed start in this world because of hockey is all the way I view. And now, now I'm going full time and I can, go into my full potential, but I still have so much room to grow because I had such a delayed start. Like I'm not even, I'm not near the peak of where I'm going to be as an actor or a comedy creator, like not even close to it. I, I see myself here, the ceiling's up there. Like I'm still improving every day and growing and flying because I was so you know focused on hockey. Now I'm going full time in this for the first time in my life and I'm just improving, improving, improving. It's my full energy's in it and I love it. I also, I fucking got a role in a movie and filmed a movie in January. It was, it's a hockey movie. It's about a high school hockey team. It's a serious movie and I got a role in it. My first year out, which was really cool and fucking had the time of my life filming it. And I'm not, and I'm not where I'm going and I'm, I'm not where I want to be. I'm not complacent. I'm not acting like I've arrived at where in my head, but I'm doing it. And I'm on that journey and on that path, and I'm loving it. And I'm making my way to there, but I'm in a sense like that saying it's cliche, but it's like the journey, the success is the journey. I'm, you know, I'm doing it. I'm going towards it, I'm living it. And it's gonna only get bigger and bigger and bigger. This is me manifesting out loud, really. I'm not trying to be like arrogant, but that's what I'm doing and you know, <sighs> The movie itself, when I tell you like, when I was, I filmed my first scene in this movie. It's a, it's a low budget film, uh, film, but it's, it's SAG, it's a SAG movie. So it's like, you know, there were some legitimate actors there and whatnot. It's just not like a big fucking, you know, $20 million budget. It was like a $2 million budget. Either way, nonetheless, this movie, it's my first acting gig when I went into my first role and I'll dive in more into this in a different podcast because this is not the point of the podcast, but I went into this first scene. I had, I, 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 the scene that I filmed was uh, my fictional mother in the movie. Like I was having a little argument with her and I leave and I brush shoulders with the main character, blah, blah, blah. Or when I was in this moment, it was like this surreal feeling of the thing that I daydreamed about my whole life just became a reality. And it was like, I was living in this, thing that I saw in my head was actually happening. And it was really, really surreal feeling. And this is not, again, this is not me acting like I made it, but I'm on that journey. And I don't know how it's supposed to happen. I don't know when it's gonna happen. It's just, you start something and you take that leap and you just start and you work towards something every day. You start making progress and you don't know how it's gonna happen. You can't be too concrete of this specific plan. It's just somehow it does and somehow it will. And I just, I'm at the beginning and I feel like I'm starting this whole new life. And I'm not like, I don't know when the next movie role will be, but I know what I can control is making my own shit. And hopefully there wasn't, hopefully there is another one soon. But the, the point being, it's like, I feel like I'm starting this whole new chapter of my life, this whole new life. I feel young. I feel younger than I've ever been. Like I, I feel younger than I did when I was playing college hockey. It's like this feeling of like, I'm finally doing it, what I'm supposed to, it's freeing, it's a new life, it's, it's, it's awesome. And I'm just getting started and I'm excited about it and I'm happy about it. I'm climbing, you know? I'm just gonna keep growing and keep going and that's all I can do. And I hope this gave some explanation or closure to the people who were so invested in my hockey career and wondering why I retired I hope this gives you a glimpse into my mind that, you know, this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I played my hockey, I played pro. I can look back when I'm older and know 
that I did it. I, I don't have to wonder. I did it. I know that I, it wasn't what I wanted to do. If I had played, if I had gone and never played pro those two years, I probably would have looked back and went, yeah, like, did I make the right call? Like, what if I played? No, I played. I can look back. I know that I played and I didn't want it. It's not what I wanted. Am I glad that I did it? Yes. I cherish those two years of my life even. I cherish my, all the years of hockey. I just, it's not, like I just played my hockey. I, I you know, like I don't want it to seem like I'm hating on hockey. I just, it's just not my dream to like play hockey for a living. I love that I am always going to be a hockey player in a sense. I love what I came from in that, like the, I can pull from so much in that. I, I mean, all my, com like a lot of my comedy stuff is hockey related because it's what I know best. It's all these situational, all these, the situational comedy in the hockey world. It's what I know best. It's, it's, and I'm grateful for it. it. It shaped me into who I am today that I wouldn't change that for the world. You know, like hockey made me who I am. And at the end of the day too, there's just not like, not a lot of creative people in hockey. I was surrounded by uncreative people. I like being, talking and being around people who are on the same goal and mission. And that's not what the people playing hockey are on. And that's totally fine. It's just like, I was on a different path and excited about different things and it was time. So I hope this gave a good explanation for you guys. I don't want this to persuade you guys in any way. Like if hockey is your dream and passion, then pursue it for sure. Like not, I just had this other thing that I became more in love with than, than hockey. But again, hockey is always part of it. Hockey will be the world I create my comedy in whenever I can, because I, I owe it to that. And I, and I love that I can pull from that. And I still like hockey, you know, like I like making comedy stuff around hockey. I enjoy that. It's just not my time. My time playing it is done. My purpose in hawk in the hockey world is not to play anymore. It's just, it's to create a, you know, I can tell a story now of my life through comedy. It, and that's, that's essentially what I'm doing and that, and I love it. So if your goal is to play hockey, chase it. And, but if you're also in a similar situation to me where you feel like you're stuck playing hockey and you have other goals, then, then follow in my footsteps. Let me be that inspiration and to show you that it's possible, that you can, you can take the leap and, and go for it. That's, that's what I can hope that I can do for some people. And then I hope that I gave a good explanation um, for the others. And I know it's impossible to explain. I know there will be some people hating on it and you know, a lot more people who support it, but I hope that this gave what you're looking for and you can stop DMing me about it. <laughs> Although I don't think anyone, I don't think those DMs will stop ever. That's probably all I got for you. Um, I, it's this podcast, as far as the podcast goes, I plan to, plan to bring it back a bit. Um, this one was very serious for the, because of the title. I plan to do more of a comedic slash serious podcast to just show you me as a whole, whether it's by myself doing comedic rants and just talking to you guys like this. Let me know if you do like this style where I'm talking to you, not like a co-host, because I think it's cool and I can do those com comedic bits too, along with just shooting the shit about my life. I can do a hybrid of both, you know, some with co-hosts, some with not. Um, but I plan to bring it back, not every week at the moment. It's not where my main focus is. It's more of like, I want to check in with the podcast, like, and you guys can get to know me better. And this is what I've been doing type thing. So that's how I feel about the pod at the moment. Um, I'm also debating going full time on Patreon with the podcast and making it like an exclusive thing where whoever, whoever really just wants to get to know me better can through there, or maybe I'll grow it a little bit more publicly than go to Patreon. Um, just like, it's a way to, like I've said before, like you don't have to wait for the sponsors and you can create like your own income and give back to the fans and more personal things. So I might go that path. I don't quite know yet, but the podcast will be a reoccurring thing going forward. If you've gone this far, don't forget to check out the new channel, Pat Shea Productions, where all my new comedy stuff and comedy films will be posted. I plan to make more. I got some fun things on the that I'm writing right now that that I plan to attack next. I don't want to give it away. I don't want people stealing my ideas because that's a thing people do. But I'm writing a series right now that I want to try to film, whether it's five episodes or 10, whatever's tangible, whatever's doable. It's going to be a five to 10 episode thing that'll drop weekly, like five weeks in a row, however episodes I can manage to make essentially. And I'm going to drop five in a row probably next early, next winter or fall. 
and that is going to be like, I want that series to be the constant thing that I, that I do for like, you know, four or five seasons, we could call it. And ideally the budget will get bigger and I can make uh, more episodes and maybe it gets picked up. But yeah, that's where I'm at. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in for whoever is still here. I appreciate the support. And if you're only here for my hockey career, that's okay. I appreciate everyone who still supports me and watches my stuff more than, more than anything. But um, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah, we trapping out apartments. I ain't done while you start shit.